So now we're in the second gallery of the show called Situating a Practice. And this is really a place where we're looking at that most immediate topographic investigation of site. And we have four projects in this, um, in this gallery. We each look at a different part of the island, a different kind of site. Um, the first is the Ina de Silva house, which is an urban site. Yes, of course. And here there's this lovely little aerial map that you've got, which shows the location of the house in a highly dense urban situation to which Jeffrey sort of has reacted in a very yes. specific way, uh, where for the first time since, I think, the uh, colonial period, you had a courtyard house with walls pushed to the outside and the garden put in the center. So the courtyard becomes the model, but it's essentially inverting so, what was essentially the Colombo house, which was a pavilion in the middle of a garden. He now creates a house around the garden. And, and, and you see that in this lovely drawing um, made can we talk about by this? Jeffrey. That's an interesting part because you had to keep your setbacks. And although the road never went back to the setback, he creates an, a little veranda for the road and actually it's for people walking on the road it's not Just, it's not even for the yeah for the people living in it so in that sense he's reacting one to the outside by inverting the garden and two to the outside also by placing a veranda for people outside on the street to use yeah and in in, in many ways he's becoming a, a, he's creating a truly urban house that has privacy but also extends outwards. Which is remarkable, because at the time the site was considered small. Yes, I mean, Ina, yet, Ina de Silva tell, told me once, he said, oh my goodness, darling, we couldn't afford to buy a big site. And of course, it's 80 perches or something. Um, and of course, we have this wonderful drawing here, which is perhaps, it's iconic to the extent that it's one of the first drawings that set the design style, the drawing style of the office by Lucky Senanaika. And I think this is the only drawing of the original set yeah. that we have uh, in contrasting, uh, really, really beautiful, but all we have is a blueprint, and that's what, it, that's we, what have we have here. We, we have the original. We have the original tracing, drawing, right, yeah. the one drawing. Uh, and, and here you begin to see that architecture was not just about making buildings. They were really about making a lifestyle. And you see every little detail of what was imagined as Ina de Silva's lifestyle, of her batik hangings, uh, and, and her little tortoise and the collections she had all drawn into this which was actually a presentation drawing to her so it was trying to sort of capture her imagination about this is how you might live here madam and, 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 and there it is and this of course wonderful model made uh, in 2003 for the 2004 exhibition uh, that was at the Deutsche Architecture Museum um, made using sort of materials that Jeffrey Bauer might have used for his building. So the cast concrete bases, um, plaster, and of course uh, we had these roofs that were made out of, uh, of, of, tile. of, 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 of tile. Um, and uh, it's an extraordinary mo model and it has survived for almost 25 years yeah. um, since it was exhibited uh, in uh, Frankfurt in 2004. So here we have a second project you've chosen very carefully, and it's much more a topographical project yes. in, the, in, in the true sense of the word. Uh, uh, the way, uh, and, and there are two, uh, here there are two of your ideas, I think, melding the notion of topography and the notion of material. Yes. I think, you know, Jeffrey Bava spoke about trying to create this orphan's home for village women who would then be in familiar surroundings. Exactly. So, one, she, he places them very beautifully on the ridge of this site as a series of buildings, the priest's house on one side, the cow sheds on the other, and the kitchens and the dormitories on the top with the chapel, I think, exactly. uh, on the other, other end. And he builds in around the existing structures, so he, which is, I think, a very key part of his approach to building. That it so wasn't always it's erasing. It's not the palimpsest. It's, yes. it's, 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 it's the palimpsest. The palimpsest it's, it's, the, it's the layering. Exactly. Layer after layer of things that were there and then and taking And I love the water tank, which gets so much care and attention. So it, it all fits beautifully important, together. Indeed. And of course, the other s I issue is, of course, the issue of materials. Now, yeah. remember, in the 1960s, uh, we were in a, in a 
very interesting economic situation, not very not different unlike. to now. <laughs> and we had to manage with lots of materials. So if you look at this, you see coconut columns, reapers that are made of coconut, very, very simple uh, palette of materials that had to be used. Um, and then Jeffrey once told me that Mother Good Council, who was this Irish nun, who was in charge of all of this, would come to his office and say, Jeffrey, we have no money. Yes. Let's pray. And she would sort of get on her knees and pray. And, 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 I and think it worked. money would come. And it, and, and it worked. It worked also because the architect was willing yes. to be open to use materials that he would otherwise not have used yes. uh, in a project uh, for actually achieving whatever you needed to achieve. Yeah, and I, and I would also point to these mosaics, which are remarkable, designed by Barbara Sansoni and then executed by, uh, by Lucky Selenaika. Yes. And again, mosaics are one of the historic ways of bringing art in at a lower cost into Indeed, and, and these are, what, f more than 60 years old? Oh, or almost 70 almost, years yes. old? Yes. <laughs> uh, and they're still there. 50. That's yes, very that's interesting, although the building is abandoned now. Uh, it's, 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 still, it's there. still there. And um, talking of palimpsest, it's very interesting that we have the house on the Red Cliffs or the Jawadana house yes. here. Because it's built on this spectacular site where really, as Jeffrey said, there should be nothing between you and the, the view. The, the view. And, and, and here it is, uh, just a very simple pavilion sitting on, interestingly, the footprint of an earlier building that had uh, been used by the current owner's grandfather uh, and another family. And there was a terrible fire which destroyed the original building. And Jeffrey, in, in many ways, out of respect for what was already on the site, he builds the lightest kind of structure that yeah. you could imagine. And here we have a sort of more detailed architectural drawing of it, um, I think done by my business partner, Murad. Um, I believe so. For that particular uh, structure. And I remember the moment when the two pitched roof became a single pitch. And in many ways, it was also because uh, I remember Murad was working kind of moonlighting on a factory for a friend of his. And he knew everything about steel, steel roofs. Steel. And, 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 and Jeffrey said, Oh, Murad, I know you know about steel roofs. I, how he knew that we were moonlighting at all, I have no <laughs> idea. But, um, and, and, and then Murad brings into this idea of you yes. know, how does one make a steel roof. And Jeffrey adjusts and it by shifting it. Yeah, and, then, and then he sinks the building halfway through so yeah. that as much of the view can be taken in from yeah. the covered area. And I think that's an extraordinary uh, sort of idea of how to spend a holiday. And I think that given that it's his penultimate house, it's just a remarkable exercise in restraint. It is. It is. I mean, Look, it's really the only it's house. It's just the line The on last the house he was fully engaged with. Yeah. And there's this beautiful poem here uh, for Jeffrey, written by Michael Ondaatje, who, uh, who talks about this idea of the non-house, where it's uh, finally, uh, it's, it's, it's a last footstep before formlessness, he yes. says. So this idea that architecture doesn't always have to be formed in, in the conventional way. Yes, I think that's an important yes. part of Bauer's yeah. work, isn't it? And pretty early on, of course, this one that we haven't really seen, uh, we, we missed out on, uh, is again about site. It's about topography yes. and a very specific topography of rocks and, uh, boulders. Uh, and boulders. And the story here is that um, Jeffrey Bauer and Ulrich Plesner, who was his partner at the time, arrived on the site with a plan for a manager's bungalow. And they discovered this lovely location with, with the boulders. Yeah. And, and, and they decided, look, this just didn't work. It wasn't a house that you wanted to build. Um, let's just start putting sticks and strings together. And literally what we have here is a record of what was built on site. I don't think we have found a single building, like a, a building drawing for it. This is the only The drawing. only record yes. is a record of what was, was built. It. So it's quite obvious that the story must be true, yeah. that he put sticks and yes. strings together and told the Barsunas to just build a wall here and build a roof here. But it's an extraordinary building. In these little archival photographs, I think you've chosen well, Shari, it shows how the original uh, uh, inhabitants lived in it this incredible sort of concrete beam that crosses between two rocks. But underneath are these very modern chairs and a grand piano. 
which because I'm told the wife of the original owner used to play. Yes. And so it's kind of a very rustic house, but there was also a space for this very refined kind of lifestyle. And I think it's also interesting, when you look at this photograph, you see how it's open, and that's the opposite of what the colonial estate bungalow was, which was a fortress and closed Indeed. in. Indeed. And here it is totally part of the oh landscape. My God. Poor, poor, poor piano. There would have been so many rats <laughs> in it, I'm sure. There are many stories of uh, vipers and various, and the elephants but who peered over the But that was obviously a statement site. about exactly. how, you, how you must After live. 1948. After 1948. After 1948, how you must live. I think so. Uh, in, 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 in our country, right? Yeah.